Welcome to Save a Hit for Slower on 420 Science Club. My name is Elijah, aka Slower Future, and you can check me out on all my socials there. You know, we focus a lot on Colorado and the West Coast for the cannabis industry, and even though Maine's governor just vetoed a recent bill to legalize cannabis in their state, Maine has an incredibly vibrant medical cannabis system that's been operating for years already. There are people who are pioneering businesses there and really risking a lot of money so that in the future they're going to be at the forefront of what will be a booming recreational industry. I had the pleasure to check out High Tech Extracts. They're just outside of Portland and they do CO2 extraction of cannabis. These systems use supercritical CO2 to extract all of the beneficial things that we might want or maybe some of the negative things that we don't want from, well, any organic or potentially inorganic material, but for these purposes, we're talking about cannabis. We're talking about making uh, hash dabbables, things that you could put into edibles, or uh, medicines for cancer. The system is fully automated. We use a canister and we load the material directly into the canister. So you pull the pin. This gets turned a sixth of a turn. And then out it comes. And then the canister gets loaded in. So what I want you to do is I want you to come over here. You want me to run it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I want you. This is really, really difficult. Okay. I want you to press that button there. The start cycle button. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Oh. Done. CO2 bottles are connected to this machine and they feed this accumulator because we recycle everything. But we consume CO2 because when we start each process, we flush all of the air out of the canister because we want to get rid of the oxygen and the nitrogen because the oxygen and the nitrogen can be reactive. Gotcha. So when it comes out of here, we chill it further before it gets to the pump. We have a heater. Um, which heats the, the CO2 and it brings it up to the supercritical fluid state. This particular small machine has over 100 meters worth of heat exchangers. Now we use that much uh, uh, length of heat exchanger because we want to be able to raise and lower the temperature uh, by using the smallest differential in temperature, the smallest delta T between the CO2 and the heating source. And by having longer length, we can achieve that with the least amount of delta T. The smaller the delta T, the more accurately we can control the temperature of the process. This is a small machine? This is our littlest machine. After the CO2 is brought up to the supercritical fluid state, it comes up in, into the extraction vessel through the canister and the material and then out of the canister and it then continues on 
um, to the system. So that brings us back around to, to the separation vessels, S1. At this point in time, the CO2 had saturated with the extract. It's held in suspension because the certain amount of solvating uh, uh, capability of that CO2 at that particular pressure and temperature. When it comes in here, um, that pressure drops dramatically. Um, the temperature will drop as well, and so the, the material no, can no longer stay in solution, and it drops out. Um, if we want, we can set a different pressure between here and here, so we can get certain materials to drop out here, and certain materials to drop out there. Um, and then again, here we primarily is used to, to remove the water, to keep the water out of the system. So how much how much flour did that come from? Um, the the what the capacity that we can put in here depends upon the, the grind of the material, which largely depends upon the dryness of the material. Gotcha. This particular material was um, unusually dry. It was only eight percent moisture content. Okay. Um, typically, we see between five percent and twenty-five percent. Uh, the more water that's in it, the more it um, slows down the process um, and affects the, the outcome in a variety of different ways. Uh, this was very dry and as such, what came out was not as typically foamy as you would normally see. Um, and so, uh, it's also quite fluid. This is uh, alcohol mixed with that product to de-wax, right. de-wax that. Yeah. So the alcohol in the freezer, it pulls up the waxes and then you can just scoop it off the top or? No, oh, it does create a... You can start to see it. Oh yeah, different okay. layers there. Yeah, different layers there. Yeah. Okay. And because then what will happen is we will then run it through a filtering process. We're not doing any filtering right now, but we have these filtering devices, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll filter. Uh, we have different size filters, different kinds of filters, uh, different um, uh, filter porosity. We're ready to rotate of that, all right? So if you look at this, this is our clarified solute. So this is cannabinoids in alcohol that has been clarified through our filtering clarification process. And then that is drawn into the rotovap and we rotovap out the alcohol, right? And the alcohol we collect in here and we, we reuse. We move as much alcohol as we can down until this maybe four or five percent alcohol because if you take it all out you won't be able to get it out of the jar right out of the out of the it's vessel too sticky. right out of the flask so we take it down as far as we feel comfortable again let's say it's maybe four or five percent and then we put it into a, a back oven to purge the alcohol and, it, and again it's typically three to five days at a low temperature to remove the alcohol so that's the clarified absolute. That looks amazing. Okay. Never seen more than 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we have some customers who like to add terpenes. Mango's a favorite. And so again, here's some of the clarified absolute. This one's Blue Dream. Those smell incredible. And when we add terpenes, it's maybe a 1%, something like that. Spent material. Compact it down a bit. Compacts down quite a bit. This was a very, very fine grind. It looks dry. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very dry. dry. 
Yeah, there's nothing sticky in it or anything. It to be wet. No, and there's not much left in there because you really yeah. can't smell much, so. Can that be used for anything? Um, if we do the job right, there's nothing there really to do. How many grams is this roughly? This is going to be about a hundred maybe, maybe a little less. Yes. high tech extractions and that means that we got a beard beard covering and, and hair covering we got to put on these cult shoes 